Vanessa. I haven't made a video in a while. I feel like as everyone else is dealing with just the world, the pandemic, work, everything feels hard to want to have a creative outlet. Today I thought that I would come here and just tell you things that I've been reading in the last month. I hope that you've been well during this. I hope that you are ready to vote. I'm ready to vote. After I posted my last video, I probably didn't read for like almost, you know, a week and a half. I've gotten back into it and it kind of just depends on the news cycle. <laughs> and if things aren't great, I stop reading. And then as I kind of process that information, deal with it, then I start reading again. So let's go through the things that I've been reading. And the first book I already took back to the library and it's Deep Delta Justice. I was really excited about this book and I think it just didn't deliver what I expected of it. I really enjoy 1960s history. I love civil rights history. But but I just didn't really feel that this book came together for me and it didn't like hit me in the way that I expected that it would. I also really did not like the audiobook experience. Um, the narrator was very quiet as he was talking and then when there was quotations, especially from bombastic anti-civil rights folks, he would be yelling in the audiobook, which didn't love having to keep going up and down in volume. Then after that I read Almost American Girl and this is about a teen moving from South Korea to Alabama and overall like the storytelling in this um, didn't wow me in the way that other graphic memoirs have but I did enjoy seeing Robin Haw's experience moving here. Uh, I particularly loved her depiction of her mother and her mother working as a single mom in Alabama and dealing with expectations of her as a woman. I really enjoyed how learning a new language was depicted in here as well because I really related to that. After that I read Heavy Vinyl which I also wasn't super enthused about. Um, the characters were really cute and I love the illustrations but I really felt like the plot left something to be desired. I don't really know if I care enough to read volume 2. After that I read Act which is the third book in the Olivia, you know, Kayla Miller series um, for kids and I really love all of- I feel like she's a girl that kids can relate to, especially the kids that like Raina Telgemeier, Svetlana Chamakova, Shannon Hale's graphic novels. I think people who like those would really like this. This I felt like really explained elections and politics in a way that was good for kids and kind of the example that were used were things that kids could actually see themselves in so I really like that. Then I read Girl Unframed by Deb Coletti. I was really excited about this and I am excited to read more by Deb Coletti. I really like the themes in this book. It's about how girls are perceived and looked at by men, um, men who are close to them and you know strangers also. Really I think the only things that I didn't love so much about this book is how much it reminded me of Dirty John and like what is about to happen and how it's narrated to kind of like keep listening because it's gonna end badly. If it's too similar to Dirty John, I just kept thinking about the podcast and about the TV show, which I've watched as well. Um, and I think that's what hampered my enjoyment of this one. Then I read Claudia and Mean Janine, which is the fourth in the Babysitter's graphic novel series. This is the last one that Raina Telgemeier was involved in. Um, and I only went back to the series because I loved so much this episode from the TV series on Netflix. Um, <clears throat> it's the one of the episodes that like really made me cry just because I love Claudia and her relationship with her Mimi and so I wanted to see how it was portrayed in the graphic novel as well so that's why I read it and it was very cute but again I think the TV show episode was a little bit more effective. After that I read something really great um, and that was The Body Papers by Grace Talusen. This is a this is a collection of essay memoirs and it was just so lovely, so bittersweet, but so important and I'm so glad that I read it. The topics that you can expect to be explored in this collection uh, is family trauma, sexual abuse, race and identity, fertility, and cancer. It really hurt to read this uh, from the perspective of Grace and her family moving from the Philippines to the United States, all the obstacles that she has faced and the obstacles that her family has faced. don't really recall reading books about Filipino culture and from the perspective of a Filipino immigrant, so I really enjoyed that and I also really thought the father-daughter relationship was very interesting to see how it was depicted and how she remembers and thinks about her father. There are definitely some really harrowing essays in here but really touching as well and it just let me into her life and I really appreciated that. Everything else I think I still have books out from the library so let's talk about them. 
The next one that I finished after that was Fighting Words by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. I've been looking forward to this book all year long, basically. It's been like one of the most hyped middle grade books. It's a book about sexual abuse of minors and definitely want to preface by saying that there are conversations in here that are tough and I wouldn't just give this to any any kid. I'd say it's probably up there with maybe he just likes you. I feel like maybe he just likes you is a little bit more about the everyday experience of being a girl and you know the attention harassment that you might get from your peers. Well this is about people in power taking advantage of a child. Um, so it's a, a very different conversation, I feel like. The main character here has a really strong voice and I think that's what's most appreciated by me. You can definitely tell who Della is. She is really the, the person that moves this book through. There are definitely some aspects of the book that felt a little bit overwritten or unnecessary or like that they didn't add to the story. That's just a pers personal preference, but specifically I'm thinking of the way that Della starts seeing herself as a wolf and her pack, you know, her, her family as wolves in a pack, um, and that just kept being brought up over and over again. There's also in here discussion about suicide too, so I think it's important to also mention that that is in here. Um, but overall, a good middle grade book, and one that I would recommend if you're interested in these conversations and stories like this. After that, I read Fights, One Boy's Triumph Over Violence by Joel Christian Gill. This is a graphic memoir and it's about the author's childhood and growing up kind of in very much fight or fight mentality um, that he was raised with and that he saw all around him. You know, like if somebody says something, you have to go stand up for yourself and fight. He sees this as really emotionally draining for him as he grows up and becomes a teenager. This is mostly focused on childhood, but it focuses also on his teenage years before he meets his wife and has his own family. And it's him kind of looking at his family and wanting his kids to not feel like this, that they have to constantly be fighting to defend themselves and that there's more to life than constantly being on guard and ready to fight. This was moving and I really enjoyed my time with it. I loved his perspective. This makes you realize that not every child really gets to grow up and be a child. That's depressing, but I think that he left off this graphic memoir in a really optimistic way of him looking at his own children and realizing that it wasn't expected of them to also be ready to fight like he was when he was growing up. So that was uplifting at the end. After that, I read a very anticipated book lots of people have loved this year, and that is Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. I think I ended up giving this three and a half stars, like it didn't, I thought that it was going to be a five star read when I started it. There were many moments where I was like, mmm, and nodding and agreeing, um, and I just loved how she put some of those conversations and arguments together, especially when she talks about food and the importance of food as a feminist issue, you know, access to food and hunger. And I also really liked how she talked about gun violence in this um, as a feminist issue and allyship. I think the downfall for me when it came to this book is that a lot of it felt like generalizations. The author would often make comments and start arguments by saying like, it's true that, or we know that. I just want people who are interested in this book to know that it comes from a more general standpoint. I also really, really disliked the audiobook experience of this, and it's read by the author. It's just incredibly choppy, one of the choppiest audiobooks that I've ever read or ever listened to. You could tell that it's mostly like spliced audio clips put together where like things were re-recorded over and over again and then just like put together and I would say like every 10 to 30 seconds you could notice like a change in the tone of the voice, the like intonation of the voice. Sometimes at a higher pitch or at a lower octave talked really fast and then other times talked more slowly and then when you're putting those back to back on each other you can see kind of like the way that it does not flow and how it's coming across in the audiobook and that really took me out of the experience and distracted me as I was listening. So if you're interested in this book, I actually don't recommend the audiobook and I think it might be better to just read the book. Okay, almost done! After that I read Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan and I was really excited about this book ever since I've realized that I enjoy reading about millennials who hate themselves. I'm still on hold for luster and um, I'm trying to read more millennial quote-unquote fiction. It's just really disaffected youth and some people may be like, I'm tired 
of these really unlikable characters, but I just want to say, like, from the perspective of someone who is 27, this feels real to me and, you know, not necessarily in, like, that I am like this, but that at moments in time in my life I feel this disaffected and this outside of my own life, it feels like, just watching myself live my life and just being angry at, like, certain aspects that feel immovable and unchangeable. So I appreciate people who understand me <laughs> writing books like this. So the most, the things that I loved the most about this were the main character Ava's retorts about capitalism and colonialism um, and abortion coming from the perspective of her being Irish. Not necessarily like she actually believes this, these things but just to argue and just to show you the ineffectiveness of different systems of power. There are definitely parts of this book that I felt were a little bit too smart for me or that I didn't understand because I'm not Irish or I'm not from the UK and I had to reread a few of those parts. So definitely if you're listening to, which I did, um, I read along with it and I would pause the audiobook and like reread parts just so that I knew that I understood what I was reading. And another thing that I really enjoyed was how the English language in general was depicted in this because she is a teacher in Hong Kong and she kind of just sees all of the ways that proper English aren't really even followed by her and Irish people and I found that really funny reading those parts in this book sometimes. Definitely recommend if you like reading books about millennials with self-esteem issues. This was an enjoyable one for me even though the character and the things that she is doing and thinking about are not that enjoyable. Last but not least, the last thing that I finished, and I finished this yesterday, and I really zoomed through this one, was Larger Than Life. This is a history of boy bands from New Kids on the Block to BTS by Maria Sherman. I really enjoyed my time with this. If you remember, maybe a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, Paperback Crush was a really popular book on booktube and it mostly focused on the evolution of YA fiction. It was illustrated, it was short, it was conversational. So basically that same style is what this book is. It is very much illustrated throughout. The tone in the text is very humorous, it's very conversational and fun. So that's kind of what I liked. The most about this book. It talks mostly about the boy bands that have made it in the American market and I feel like some reviews have really talked about that this does not focus on Motown as much, black boy bands or Latinx boy bands, which I agree with those criticisms but I think she really was focusing on the bands that made it the highest that they could go. So she focuses on New Kids on the Block, which I didn't know much about, honestly. It's before my time. But then she focuses on Backstreet Boys and Sync, the Jonas Brothers, One Direction, and then BTS and the K-pop explosion that is currently happening. Definitely she wanted to focus on like the cultural, you know, pinpoints of boy bands. I felt like I loved the chapters on the Backstreet Boys and Sync. Even the Jonas Brothers, which I didn't I didn't actually care about or grow up with, but just putting them in the context of Disney and like Disney celebrities and the Disney Channel culture um, was interesting to me and One Direction, which I was super into <laughs> eight, nine years ago and BTS, I don't know much about and I haven't really become involved in the BTS fandom so it was interesting to learn a little bit more about them and to learn about k-pop culture in general. So I would definitely say this is not like the end-all be-all about boy bands. Um, definitely focuses on a very particular kind of boy band that made it in the western American market. It still has like little nuggets and little pieces of information that I found entertaining and interesting and that made me laugh or giggle. It did take me down memory lane a little bit and I enjoyed that about it as well. So that is it for what I have read. If you have read any of these books, let me know in the comments. Now let me tell you the three things I'm currently reading. So it is currently Latinx Hispanic Heritage Month until October 15th. So I am currently reading Punching the Air by Evie Saboy and Yusuf Salam. And I feel like this has paired well with fights so far of always needing to be on guard and to defend yourself. And then I'm also reading Letters from Cuba by Ruth Behar. This is pre-World War II, so 1937 is where we're focused on, 
and the main character has just gone on a boat all the way to Cuba to join her father and to make money to then try to get the rest of her family there. It's written in letters and so far it is very uplifting and kind and you can tell the main character is very very sweet and cares about others. So I'm enjoying this one so far. And then last but not least I'm currently listening to I Killed Zoe Spanos and at first I was kind of not into this, the first 10%. It kind of was a struggle for me to understand what it was that was happening but then very soon thereafter we started getting more information and started going to the past there's like multiple timelines that you're following as you're trying to understand what happened to this girl who is now dead and there's a podcast aspect to it as well so giving me a little bit of Sadie vibes and the narration of the audiobook is awesome because it's multiple you know narrators again let me know in the comments if you've read any of these or would like to read any of these I hope that you have been managing okay I'm very active on Goodreads so follow me on there or also on Instagram I have been posting um, things that I'm reading on my Instagram so definitely check me out on there I'll leave all those links down below and I shall see you in my next video bye bye